Hey everyone, so we just got the answers to the Q&A on the Misk Odyssey, so with that out and the inside star citizen that we just got, we probably have all the information on this ship that we're going to get for a while. So with that being said, and the fact that this ship is an explorer that's around the same size as the very popular Anvil Carrick, I wanted to talk about the Odyssey today, and then at the end I wanted to compare it to the Carrick to see how they stack up. Before we start though, if you end up enjoying this video, please consider leaving a like and or subscribing, or if you really want to help me out, you can become a channel member with that join button. I really appreciate all of your support. Okay, so let's start off with a bit of an overview of the Odyssey. Again, this ship is positioned as an explorer, and CIG even calls it the most advanced exploration ship available to civilian starfarers. So the features that it has to help justify that statement are a sizable hangar, medbay, okay cargo, and somewhat limited but built-in mining, tractor beam, and refinery capabilities. To break those down a bit, the cargo on the ship is probably its weakest point. It does have the benefit of all of its cargo being in one contiguous area that isn't broken up by any sort of dividers or anything, but as for its actual capacity, that's only listed at 252 SCU. And at points in the vehicle description, they call it dedicated cargo space, but that's a little bit misleading because this cargo space is actually your vehicle bay as well. So as soon as you load up a rover or something, which you might want to have with this being an explorer, your effective cargo space is going to diminish significantly. It does seem like this ship is pretty early on in development though, so this could definitely change. And if it does, I really hope they manage to squeeze a little bit more capacity out of whatever space is there. But yeah, at the moment, this is a bit of a weak point for the Odyssey, and it's a shame that a ship that's so focused on being able to explore pretty much indefinitely because of its refueling abilities has so little space to store anything, whether that be supplies or artifacts that you find during your exploration. So let's move on to a strong point of the Odyssey, its hangar. The Odyssey isn't a massive ship at its listed 140 meters, although that definitely could grow, but at that size it manages to fit a standard extra small hangar. And while extra small does sound small, that space would actually make it bigger than anything that's in the game right now, because the A90 Jumps hangar isn't quite big enough to fit that description. In the Q&A, they give a big list of ships that you'd expect to fit in a hangar of this size, so things like the Prospector, Eclipse, and Saber. But as usual, if you're creative and don't mind a few scratches on the paint of your ships, you'll probably be able to fit more things in. I was going to break out the Photoshop and try to do some investigation as to what might fit, but the user by the name of Angel Arc on Spectrum actually used the 3D model from the hollow of the ship that was on display at IAE to try to fit some things in. They made a pretty extensive thread, which I have linked below if you want to check that out. But the more interesting ships that might fit are the Vulture, which could be useful if you find some derelicts or something like that as you're exploring, and the Vulcan, although this one looks like it might not actually fit. It would definitely be a tight squeeze. One weird thing about the hangar though is how tall it is. Now I kind of like this from an interior design standpoint because on the upper levels of the ship you have nice windows down into the hangar and it kind of works as an atrium sort of thing and is a nice difference from the small corridors that you have going through the rest of the ship. But with this hangar occupying all three of the levels, it seems like there's going to be a ton of wasted vertical space. Even with some of the taller extra small ships, so like a prospect or something, you're going to have plenty of headroom and with the lack of cargo space like I mentioned earlier, I think it would have been a much better use to have the hangar occupy only two of the levels and then use the area below it for storage. I mean, they could have even made a sort of half-height level underneath it to at least hold some cargo if they really needed that vertical space, but from what it looks like right now, it's just going to be a waste and really isn't necessary. Getting into the other main features of the ship, the biggest thing that sets it apart from other explorers is the equipment that it has built in to refuel itself. This includes a mining arm, tractor beam, and refinery. So yeah, as an explorer, this is definitely a very useful feature. Even in a small system like Stanton, it's still possible at the moment to run out of fuel, so I imagine that it's going to be much more of a concern when you're exploring uncolonized territory and covering huge distances. Also, it seems like they want to make refueling a bit more of an expense in the future, so with a sizable ship like this, it'll probably save you a good bit of credits to be able to refuel yourself. So yeah, this is useful to support this ship as it explores, but unfortunately we got clarification during the Q&A that all of this mining and refining infrastructure is not really going to be useful for much else. They said that it can only mine and refine quantanium, and then also refine hydrogen from gases that you collect, and also that the refinery can only be fed by what is collected by the Odyssey itself. So some people, myself included, were hoping that there might be some synergy between this and Misk's other small mining ship, the Prospector, where you might be able to go and find a great mining location by exploring in your Odyssey, then get into your Prospector to collect some materials and bring them back to the Odyssey to refine them as you go. But yeah, they straight up said that this is not planned functionality in the Q&A. To me this just seems like another area where there's a lot of wasted potential with this ship. 
It seems odd to fit an entire refinery into a ship just for it to only be used for the purpose of refueling. And especially with the price point that this ship is launching at, it just seems to me to be a little sparse on features since really all it does is explore. Having at least some capability to mine material for profit, or at least being able to refine other materials, would have helped justify it a bit more in my opinion, but what do you guys think? There's a few more features to go over on this ship, but even with all of those it just seems kind of lacking to me. So for the rest of the ship, there's a few less significant but still useful features. First of all, it has a tier 2 medbay, so just for reference, that's on par with what you have on the Carrick and the 890, and as an explorer it makes sense to have this since you'll likely be very far away from dedicated medical facilities a lot of the time, so being able to address significant injuries using these facilities is very useful. What is kind of weird with this being an explorer is the fact that there are no dedicated scanning rooms or even specialized equipment. They specified this in the Q&A, and while in the answer that that they included this in, they also reassured us that the Odyssey will still be able to scan. They also did say that the special hardware on things like the Carrick gives those ships special bonuses in this department, so the Odyssey probably isn't going to be exceptionally good at scanning, and that seems like an odd decision for an explorer. They also mentioned that it's not going to be able to map jump points like the Carrot can. So yeah, I'm a little bit confused because I figured scanning would be a pretty large part of exploration, but I guess it's not all that important if this dedicated explorer that they call the most advanced explorer available to the civilians doesn't focus too much on it. It seems like true exploration gameplay is a long ways off at this point, so I guess we'll just have to wait and see how things turn out with that. And who knows, maybe scanning won't be all that important for most parts of the exploration gameplay loop. It just seems odd to me to not have more of a focus on scanning in a dedicated exploration ship, like the Odyssey. The rest of the design of this ship is going to be a bit more dependent on personal preference as to whether you like it or not. I personally like a lot of the MISC design choices, and the stainless steel used in the interior of other large MISC ships like the Starfarer has always been somewhat appealing to me. It seems like with the Odyssey they're going to keep some of this, but try to make it a little bit less sterile, but I imagine it'll have some resemblance to the Starfarer interiors. The bridge will also be similar to the Starfarers, and while I know a lot of people were pointing out how it was funny that they advertised excellent cockpit visibility when you're going to be looking out of a tiny slit of a windshield, I also am a fan of the Starfarer's bridge, and especially that captain's chair. I just think the way that the crew stations are arranged is pretty cool, and looking at the images that we have of the Odyssey so far, it's going to be similar. And if you do want a better view, there are places on the ship that should provide that. So on Inside Star Citizen, they pointed out the sort of mining bubble-like area that should give you a really solid view, either while you're mining or just if you want to go there to look out into space. And this looks like it's going to be kind of similar to something like the Prospector's Canopy. And then in the rear of the ship, on the sail page, they have a label for a viewing area, so hopefully that spot will also have a nice and open view out as well. But yeah, I can also definitely understand those people who are frustrated with the visibility of that classic Miss Canopy design, and the people who aren't a fan of their somewhat Spartan interior styling. One thing that I think everyone will agree is pretty cool though, is the inclusion of some more Xeon tech in the Odyssey. One of the selling points of the Freelancer line was MISC's collaboration with the Xeon to make the engines more efficient, and here with the Odyssey they've worked together a bit on things again, like the main lift. One last thing to mention are the weapons on this ship, and as an explorer these are really only meant for self-defense. So I think the setup on this ship is probably going to be sufficient for that, with two dual size 5 turrets on top and one on the bottom. But yeah, this is definitely not going to be doubling as a combat ship. So yeah, that about rounds it out for the Odyssey, now let's get on to the comparison with the Carrick. So the biggest advantages the Odyssey has over the Carrick are the much bigger hangar and all of that equipment that it has that lets it refuel itself. However, for the rest of its capabilities, the Carrick pretty much either matches it or beats it. First of all, it's not entirely clear since the gameplay isn't in yet, but with the massive antennas it has and the cartography room, I think it's pretty safe to say that the Carrick is going to be superior for scanning and plotting which seems like a very important feature in an explorer. Also, the Carrick has a dedicated vehicle bay, so you don't lose cargo space if you decide to bring one or even two rovers. And even with that, it has nearly twice the cargo capacity of the Odyssey. And on top of that, those cargo hold modules at the bottom of the Carrick are intended to be modular, so you'll be able to swap those out, and who knows what sort of extra functionality you might be able to fit into those in the future. And to top it off, the Carrick has all sorts of extra features that could be useful at times, like the drones, equipment repair room, canopy shutters, and a captain's quarters. The Odyssey does slightly beat it on weaponry and shielding at the moment, but with the rebalancing that we've been getting lately, I wouldn't be too surprised to see the Carrick's shields bumped some, and maybe even some resizing on its weapons. If it does stay how it is now though, having a capital shield on the Odyssey is a big advantage. 
So yeah, I think comparing the Odyssey to the Carrick really puts it into perspective, and this comparison is what made me think it's a bit overpriced, especially with it not being flight ready yet. Unless you really need that full-sized hangar, or you really want the ability to go on exploring indefinitely, I think the Carrick is going to be the better explorer for most people, and it's cheaper. So yeah, what do you guys think? I'm glad to see another highly capable explorer just have the option, but I just feel like the Odyssey has a few too many unnecessary weaknesses for its price. The lack of cargo space in a ship this big is really strange to me, and the fact that you can really only use the mining and refining equipment for one thing makes the ship a lot less exciting in my opinion. I think a blend of an industrial and exploration ship would have been really cool and not even that unbalanced if you want to think about things in that way, because you are giving up some of those scanning features. But yeah, I'm really curious to see what your opinions are, especially after seeing that Q&A. So that's all for this video. Now I want to thank my members, Dexion Orion, Starjump Starlet, and GreatWatch93. Thank you all so much for supporting the channel. And if you guys want to help me out, you can do that by hitting the like or subscribe button or becoming a channel member. So thank you guys so much for helping me out, and thanks for watching.